his swift transition. Not covered that moose shall stand. Bear your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging hand. Everybody need to hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You ought to feel your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand and trust in him who will not leave you. What? So ever the years may bring, and if by earthly friends forsake us, still more closely to him cling. Everybody ought to hold to his hand, to my God's unchanging. Everybody need to hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You ought to build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. This is part I like. When your journey is completed and if to God you have been true, fair and bright your home in Glory and your enraptured soul will be. Why don't you hold to his hand, to my God's unchanging? Everybody ought to hold his hand to God's unchanging. And you ought to build your hopes on things eternal. To God's unchanging hand. Let us pray. <laughs> Eternal God, our Father, as we humble ourselves and submit ourselves beneath the cross, we ask that you still our hearts once again as we glean from your word the value of counting our lives through tribulation. We ask that you be with us. Give us peace. Give us the recollection of the things that we've studied so that we may impart these truths without addition or subtraction. Let every heart be open and every mind be receptive of your word. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, the one who walked the boisterous waters and he calmed the raging sea, the one who said yes to the cross. It's in his name we pray. Amen. How many of us feel defeated when trials come our way? James chapter 1 is letting us know that we can turn our trials into triumphs. We as Christians, we need to be victorious in everything that we do. Sure, there's sadness accidents, disappointments, death. Perhaps you've seen the bumper sticker that reads, when life hands you a lemon, make lemonade. It's easier to smile at that statement than to practice it. But the basic philosophy is sound. In fact, it's biblical. Throughout the Bible, people who turned defeat into victory and trial, into triumph. Instead of being victims, they became victors. I think I'll repeat that. Throughout the Bible, there are people who turned defeat 
into victory, in trial into triumph. Instead of being victims, they became victors. Turning our trials into triumph. I talked to you about this morning on not turning back. We cannot give up on our faith. James tells us that we have this same experience today, no matter what the trials may be on the outside, according to James chapter 1, verses 1 through 12, or the temptations that are on the inside, James chapter 1, verses 13 through 27, through faith in Christ, into triumph. It's through faith in Christ we can experience the victory. The result of this victory is spiritual maturity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the latter part of that verse, Paul tells us that we need to be glad that we have the victory in Jesus Christ. We need to be joyful in times of sorrow. If we are going to turn our trials into triumphs, we must obey four imperatives. Number one, we need to count. James chapter 1, verse number 2. Number two, we need to know James chapter 1, verse number 3. Number four, we need to let James chapter 1, verses 4, and James verses 9 through 11. And we have to ask James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Let's put it another way. There are four essentials for victory in trials. A joyful attitude, an understanding mind a surrendered will, and a heart that wants to believe. Trials often make the Christian bitter instead of making the Christian better. We need to know and understand the outlook determines our outcome and an altitude determines our actions. I think I'll say that again. Outlook determines our outcome and altitude determines our actions. God tells us to expect trials. Notice what James said, he said, brethren, he said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. What are divers temptations? That word divers, the word is parasmos. That means that trials are going to come, Brother Parker. They're going to come unexpectedly. They're going to come from everywhere, Brother Jenkins. I can't look for a trial because it's automatically going to come. What James is saying, he said, now that you are a child of God. You need to count it all joy whenever trials and tribulations come. Count it all joy when death reigns at my door. Count it all joy when there's sickness in my family. Count it all joy when I'm unemployed. How can I do this, Brother Norris? I can count it all joy because I know that he supplies all of my needs and he's going to take care of me. How can I count it all joy? When my spouse has left this world, how can I count it all joy when I lose my child a few weeks ago? The congregation where I preached, a lady lost her son. It was her baby. She said, Brother Norris, I lost my baby. I told her, I said, you're not the only one that lost your baby well over 2,000 years ago. Mary lost her baby. But that baby... It gave us an express way to the other side. That baby taught us how to love if we will follow his commandments. That baby taught us how to forgive. That baby taught us how to be long-suffering. That baby taught us how to have joy in the midst of our trials and our tribulations. Turning my trial into a triumph, or a victory. God tells us through James that we need to expect these trials. Yes, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. My life didn't get easier. My life got better. My outlook determines my outcome. My altitude determines my actions. Paul was writing to the church of Philippi. He said that in order for me to 
have hope of eternal life. I have to know the power of him in his resurrection. But before I can do that, Brother Robinson, I need to forget those things which are behind. That's what causes me to become in a state of fear. I can't enjoy these trials and these tribulations because I won't let go and let God. He said, they're going to come. No need of me trying to walk on eggshells because God is my protector. Hebrew writer writes, he is the author and the finisher of my faith. Everybody needs an anchor when you're going through these trials and these tribulations. And our anchor is the word of God. We need to know that we need to count these trials as blessings in our lives. We need to also know that Jesus warned his disciples in the world. You shall have tribulation according to John chapter 16, verse number 33. Paul told his converts that we must go through much tribulation to enter into the kingdom of God. We are God's scattered people and not God's sheltered people. We must experience trials. We cannot expect everything to go our way. Some people in the church want everything to go their way if it's not their way, they want to hit the highway. Amen, somebody. But I'm here to tell you, whatever church you go to, there's got to be some order because God is not the author of confusion. We are Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 29. The Bible says, God made man upright without any, any intervention. We are the ones who have created gossip. We are the ones who have created all of this mess that's going on in the church. That's the reason we need to study our Bibles to show ourselves approved workmen that need not be ashamed of the word of God. Going through a trial, going through a storm, everybody needs an anchor. What is that anchor? That anchor is the word of God. Peter emphasizes this in his first letter. Brother Mark, if you get from me, first Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 11 and 12. Brother Robinson, if you will get for me 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, let's find out about how we can be comforted in these trials and help us to understand that going through these trials. Notice what James said. He said, verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work. Let patience have her perfect work. Now I'm working on my patience, Brother Yukon. I know I need patience when it comes down to me getting ready on Sunday morning. Amen, somebody. I'm already ready, and I got 132 miles to go. That's two hours exactly and 18 minutes, give or take, here or there. And, and I'm always constantly, Sister Norris, are you ready? Baby, honey, sweetheart, darling, sugar pie, we need to go. But there comes a time when she has to say, look. If you come back in here one more time, I'm going to be just a little bit longer. Because every time you call me, I forget where I was the last time. So I'm working on my patience. Everybody has to work on their patience. And I'm finding out the best thing for me to do is go on and get ready. If I'm going to the car, go on to the car. She knows what time it is. In the church. In the church, we have a problem because everybody is impatient. Amen, somebody. They're impatient with the Sunday school. They're impatient with the worship. They want to bring in things that, that they want. Amen, somebody. But, but, but James said, you got to let, let patience have her perfect work. In other words, if you wait on the Lord, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up his eagles. He'll, he'll put you where you need to be. So, so Floyd, I've learned. I'm still learning. I'm still having a problem. I'm still, but I'm learning. I'm learning. Baby, are you ready? Wait about 10 more minutes. When, she, when, when she's coming to the car, then she'll go back. And I'll start saying something now. What am I doing? I'm waiting on God to help him control. Give me some patience right about now. Right about now. Because, see, when I put myself in her shoes, I don't want nobody nagging me. I'm almost ready. But I forgot something. 
And when you started calling me, I forgot what I went to get. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. I was almost there. Now, she's got to stand there and look. And the more I stand there and look with her, now she's really frustrated. I'm not saying anything, but I'm acting my impatience out through my actions. Through my actions. See, church, we got to learn how to behave ourselves in the house of the Lord. We don't know who's sitting next to us. I tell the church in Palestine, when you come in here, learn how to act. Don't be talking about nobody. You don't know who's going to become a member of the church. You don't know who went away. You don't know who's going to do something to edify the kingdom. We got to have patience. First Peter. Yes, sir. Thank you. As every man has received the gift. As every man has received the gift. Even so minister the same one to another. Even so minister the same one to another. Ho -ho 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 Hold on. You minister your gift. Uh -huh. The gift that God blessed you. The gift that God gave you. Not the gift that he gave Brother Parker. Right. You minister your gift. One to another. Read on, Mark. As good stewards, as a good Christian in the body, knowing that God is going to get the glory, knowing that he's watching you, be thankful for what you have. In other words, you got to have patience. Let patience have a perfect way with your gift. Read on, Mark. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's speaking truth. And I told you this morning, lie not one to another in turning back. And I made the illustration by my age. But now I'm telling the truth by my age. <laughs> Amen. Because lie not one to another. In other words, speak as the oracles of God. See, if you speak the truth, you don't have to worry about it. You know when you're little and you tell one lie and then you got to tell another lie and then you end up telling another This James is telling us, don't do that. You got to let patience have her perfect work. Let's read the psalmist, the 23rd Psalm. When David would walk through that valley, he had to have some patience. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear. You can't run through that. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. How do I know that thou art with me? Because I'm praying when pressure comes. I'm praying when it comes time for me to cry. I'm praying when my house is out of order. I'm praying about that wayward child. I'm praying about that daughter that's in the family way on more than one occasion. I know they're talking about me, but they did my Lord and Savior like that. I have to have patience. If you don't mind. To whom be praise and dominion. Use the gift that you have been given. Halo, first Peter 4. Start at verse 10. 4. Verse 10. Coming down to verse 12. First Peter 4. Yes, sir. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another. See, 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 church, see, church. We are his workmanship, not sitmanship. See, if you minister to one another, you don't have time for no messiness because you're about the message. See, we, if we deliver the message, it wouldn't be no messiness in the church. No, nobody have time. You're using your gift to edify. She's using her gift to edify. He's using his gift to edify. Everybody's busy edifying one another. You don't have time to degrade nobody because you're trying to let patience have her perfect work within you. Read on, Halo. And there that word again. There, there it is again. God did not make any jump. I told the young people, you're not here by mistake. You're not here by no accident. You are here for a purpose. God has a purpose in your life. There's no telling what that young man might be sitting back there looking at me. I love preaching in my church. You know why? The kids pay attention. Hello? Read from Halo. And this stewards of the manifold grace of God. Manifold grace of God. Read on. If anyone speaks. If anyone speaks. Let him speak as the oracles of God. Let him speak as the oracles of God. Read on. If anyone ministers. If anyone ministers. Yes. That in all things God may be glorified 
that in all things, that in all things, that in all things, who may be glorified? Well, that eliminates me. That eliminates you. Huh? I'm not the hierarchy. Hierarchy. I'm not the HNIC. and I'm not the HNIC. I'm not the head negotiator in charge. I don't know what you were thinking. Hello, Brother Norris. See, church, when we do this, this is what the church is made of. This is what James is telling us, and, 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 and Paul was telling us again this morning in Galatians, in order to keep me from turning back, I got to let the patient have a perfect work with me. And if you're impatient, I can say, I can pray for this, brother. I don't talk about you. I'm going to pray for you because I've been there before. I know what it feels like to be impatient. I know what it feels like to be a gossiper. I know what it feels like to be a liar. Because the book said we were once, we were once what? Huh? What what we get a stipulation on? What what do we get this one putting a stipulation on a sin? Huh? A liar is just as bad as a thief, a fornicator, a whoremonger. You took that pen from your office, that's not your pen. That belongs to the company. Take it back and ask God to forgive you. Suppose God called you while you, while you got that pen in your possession. Hello? See, we know we're going to die. We just don't think we're going to die right now. The first word out of the mouth of the church when Brother Berto died, oh, I just saw him. It's going to be one day, oh, I just saw you. Let patience have a perfect word. Read on for me, Halo. See, Halo, I think we're missing this church. You need to get this. That in all things, we want to do some things, and we don't want to give God the glory. Well, I, through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we, we do. Wait a minute, Halo. It's through God, through Jesus Christ, who gets the glory. Church, we don't have anything. Yes, ma'am. God has blessed you with that house that you don't want nobody to come see. That, that's still not your house. That car, those cars you drive, that's not your car. That good job you had, that PhD. Read Halo. To whom belong glory, the dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you got the verse 12 yet, I want verse 12. Beloved, do not think that you L- Listen at this. Listen at this, church. Don't think it's strange when a trial comes to you. Don't be coming, telling nobody, Jay, you just don't know what's going on with me. You just don't understand. God understands. He's been there. There's nothing going on with you that Jesus didn't face. Matthew 4, he was tempted in every way. 40 days and 40 nights. We can't even go three hours without something to eat. Some of you just got through eating and you're hungry right now. You think you're hungry. You think you're hungry. Amen. Our flesh. Then you lay down and you get uncomfortable late on in the night and early in the morning. Then you want to call in talking about you got stomach problems. You did that. Amen. See, I know I've been there. Eating too much, just eating. Just eating. Just eating, just be eating. Unhealthy. Unhealthy. I try to read, I, I want to live now. I'm not where I want to be. Next time you see me, I ought to be trimmer than this. I'm trying to get to, I know I got to die, but I haven't got to rush. <laughs> and you too. I'm using myself because, see, if I talked about you, you'd run me up out of here. Don't ever come back here no more. I don't care if you off from here. Amen, brother. No, help us, Lord. Help us. We need help. We have to turn these trials into triumphs. Everybody wins when you're a Christian. There are no losers. We're around here fighting, preachers fighting against each other, churches fighting against each other, and we don't know what we're fighting about. Just beat in the air. Recognize Satan, address Satan, and leave me alone. If the devil is in me, recognize the devil in me, but leave me alone. Read, Halo. As though some strange thing happened to me. As though some, oh, you just don't know what's happening to me. 
Oh, just, have you ever talked to some people, every time you talk to them, they just sick all the time. Everything hurt. They never get well. Monday the head hurt, Tuesday the back hurt, Wednesday I got a stomach ache, Thursday I got a toothache, Friday I got an earache, Saturday everything ache. So you're not going to see me on Sunday morning. <laughs> faith! Let faith have a perfect word. And some of, some of us get Sunday morning sickness. Don't feel good. Don't let it start raining. Preach, Brother Nard. We need help. See, we got to understand what weight is. Hey, you go to a restaurant, you see this waiter. He's assigned to these four people. He'll come, he'll come and get your drink. Ask, do you want an appetizer? He'll come back. He'll come to you, get your drink. Ask, are you ready or did he ask, do you want an appetizer? Then he'll come to drink and do the same thing. He's still waiting. He's watching. Because if you're ready, you're going to give him a signal. Then he'll go to Sister Mars. By that time, he's back. He's got everybody to order. You ready to order? Write that down. You ready to order? You ready to order? See, this is what God does. He waits patiently on us. He's just filling our order. He's trying to see if we're ready. You, we, we won't give him time to fill one order. He's helping us with patience. Now we want some, we want some joy. You haven't got the patience. Yeah, you still need some patience. That's when you can't have joy during your trial because you're not waiting on God. You want it to be like Burger King. Okay, Lord, I pray for patience. Now give me some joy. Lord, you didn't give me no joy. Now I need something else, Lord. Now I got to ask. He said, but you got to ask in faith. We're not asking in faith. We're asking on our own accord. It's not my will, but it's his will. When we get this down in church, I guarantee you, we'll be better. When death rings at my door, I can I can cry, but I can laugh too. Especially if they died in the Lord. The book says, Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. From henceforth they shall lay until their labor. Hello? That is a good point. Rejoice what? Rejoice to the extent that you can make my life suffering. You need to rejoice because now. You are part of the suffering of Jesus Christ. You are in heaviness through manifold temptations. He read that. <laughs> Trials, they're not all alike. They're like a variegated yarn that the weaver uses to make a beautiful rug. He arranges and mixes the colors and experiences of life. The final product is a beautiful thing for his glory. So what God is doing when we're going through these trials, He's testing our faith. He's rearranging our spiritual colors. He's rearranging our attitude. Because Paul told the church of Philippi, in order for you to have a good attitude, your aptitude, your attitude has to be right before you can even think about your altitude. A lot of us want to go to heaven, but we don't want to have to do what it takes to go to heaven. Everybody, everybody's in the church of Christ ain't going. We're not going to make it. Because first of all, we, gotta, we have to learn how to love each other. The agape type of love. I know it hurts when people do things to you. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. But you know, there were times when, when Mark tell you we've we been through it. There were times when he, he didn't even know. He just said, it's going to be all right. He could have come and said, you know good son of Why did you do that anyway? He didn't do that. It's going to be all right. I know I shouldn't have done it, but right now I need some love. I need to know how to get through this. I need to know that God loves me and that you love me. God works through people. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are the voice of God. And if we don't do it, it won't get done. Let patience have her perfect work. How can I let it work? Through prayer, through support of the body. That's the reason. We're all some kin to each other. You're some kin to me whether you like it or not. I'm not ugly because God made everything good. I might not look as good as you think you look. That's the problem. You think you look better than me. But his blood 
cleansed my sin. And his blood was not contaminated. And we are forever trying to contaminate the kingdom with all of these idiotic secrecies that we have. Oh, we. Help me, Lord. Church, when are we going to get it right? What a glory of God. Mark, as I close, this is enough. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul lets us know through comfort that there is still some comfort. See, we want to find comfort in six packs and find comfort here and find comfort in big screen TVs. And You already got two TVs. Why are you going to get another TV? You got a 55 and a 60. What you need with a 70? <laughs> you got two cars. Both of them are paid for. Nothing wrong with them. You go and get a new car. Why? Because of what you want. Well, I've been blessed. Well, now all spiritual blessings come through Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. Read from me, Mark, as we close. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Listen to this. Blessed. Blessed be Muhammad. Blessed be Oprah. Blessed be Steve Harvey. I love Steve. But Steve's philosophy is twisted in a lot of areas. Paul said, blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In other words, what Paul is saying, he's the one that helped the role model. He's the one that helped his son while he was here on earth. That's how he was able to be sustained. That's how he was able to go through when people talked about him. Mark, that's the reason when he was on his way to the cross, it was so heavy it wasn't the pat boom that was heavy. It was the sins of mankind. The weight of the world was on his shoulder. But, Floyd, I'm glad Simon of Serene was there. That lets me know I need my brother. Simon of Serene said, I'll help you compel that cross. And he helped him compel that cross up to Calvary. You come when he got up there and they hung him. They hung him. But when he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder, the Lord, forgive them. Even now, could I have said that? Going through all that, read, 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 Mark. The Father of mercies, and the, God of all the Father of mercies, and the God of some comfort, all comforts. All comforts. Read, Mark. He comforted us he, in all of our tribulations. He comforted us in all of our tribulation. Read, Mark. That we may be able, there's that edification of the saints. We're all connected to one another. And the purpose of our being here is to edify, to build one another up in the most holy faith. And when we stop trying to put each other down and start building somebody up so that God can get the glory. If Jenkins needs some medicine, I'm a member of the church. I'm going to go buy the medicine and I'm not going to bring the receipt to Halo. You know why? I am the church. I don't have to go get my money back for what? Edify. I told him, Mr. Powell said, well, no, you can't preach like that. You, you, you. Why? Remember the church, every time they do something, I need my money back for what? Where's your Christian attitude? Huh? He gave his only begotten. And that that you're giving to help somebody, that's not yours. We know, Mark, that we may be able to comfort them, them, which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves and we're comforted by God. The same God that comforts you, that's the same God that comforts me. Yes, I know my son is in the penal system, and the doors seem like they revolve around his character. Yes, I got a daughter who's in the family way on more than one occasion, but that does not give you the right to, to talk about me. I need you to pray for me. If you know a better way, you come talk to her. You talk to him. Just because yours have not been in the penal system, yours in the spiritual system, what's going on in your mind? 
You in prison tonight, locked up over a thought that has you captive. You think about, oh, I got to go to work in the morning. You ought to be glad to go to work in the morning. He comforts us. So this is how James say, we can count our joy. When we know, we can let, and we can ask. But we got to ask in faith. Nothing wavering. I can't, I, can't, I, can't no, no, I can't have nothing that's on my plate. I got to ask in faith and knowing that he's going to do that. Because I know he answered prayer. And when I get through praying, I, just because one or two days go by, God doesn't work like I work. His calendar, his calendar is divine. See, I'm chronological. That's what we're always saying. Oh, where's the time going? I don't have enough time. Yes, you do. He gave you 24 hours. What did you do? To the young people, don't be in such a hurry to get grown. I had to ask God to help me. Lord, I sure wish I could go back. Then I said, what for? Enjoy your life. You don't have no beer. You being taken care of by your parents. You got plenty to eat. You got clothes to wear and a roof over your head. Because I'm telling you, once you get out that door, you got to get it. You got to you gotta face Bill. And Bill is plural. He's not, they, he not singular. Bills. Every 30 or 31 days. Hell, hello. Enjoy your you. That's right. Little girl, you stay on Granny's lap chewing that gum. Stay there. She might put you down. You get back up there. Say, oh, I just love you, Granny. That's right. You hold on to that hand. Because pretty, it won't be long. I came back and everybody just time. Time. Pray God these words will help the church. We need to get serious. Have you got your funeral made out? Me and Sister Nye, we did ours. We got our stuff all ready together. All ready together. Funeral laid out. Ready. I'm not ready to go. Ready. When that time comes, ready. Turn your trial into You've heard the word. You come by hearing. You come by believing. John 8, 24. You come by repenting of your sin. A change of heart, a change of direction. Let God be your GPS. Because that thing you got in your car, man, you get lost, and it just keep going over and over again. And I turn left and said, I'm not even at that location. And don't get in a Walmart parking lot. Don't get in a Walmart parking lot. You forever lost. You better let God be your guy where he says, I am the author and the maker, the first and the last. Knows where he's going. He says, John 14, I am the way. Not ways. I am the way, the truth and the life. I want to follow somebody like that, you God, that's been here, that knows. I know time has changed and it has advanced, but nothing is new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. And when we get in our mind that this is spiritual and not carnal, <laughs> we'll be a better people. Yeah. Worry about nobody talking about you. I'm trying to get to heaven. Yeah. I'm trying to get to I'm trying to get to glory. I want to see my dad again. Yeah. I want to see Brother Bourne again. Yeah. I want to see Brother Taylor. Sister Bourne. Yeah. I want to see all of those pillars that paved the way. Yeah. And you should want to see him too. I pray, God, these words will help you. Whatever area you missing, ask God to help you. I'm so, I, I just love youngsters. I, and I, I want to commend you, Mark, and my congregation too. All those kids, they, they pay attention. I like that. You better love these children. You better love these children. Because they need our love. They, but they need to know that God. God is the creator of the creation. Do your homework. Look here, do your homework. Mama, daddy tell you you can't go nowhere. Don't get mad. Doing it for your own good. You're going to have kids one day. It's going to hit you right back in the face. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Let everybody try to glorify God. Love somebody. Reach out to somebody you know that's not here. 
And just call them and say, we miss it. Don't be calling asking them a whole bunch of questions. You don't want nobody calling you asking, hello, who wants to be, who wants to be, inter who wants to be interrogated by a member of the church? Right. Nobody. <laughs> All you want is a phone call. Man, I sure miss you. And if they go into a, a long discourse, I didn't call you for that. I'm praying for you. We missed you. Right. End of story. Hang the phone up. <laughs> Hang the phone up. Because you want to be saved. Because, see, when they start telling you, oh, it's going to, that's going to weaken you. You hear the edified in. They said, we missed you. We're praying for you. And whatever some, whenever there's a sin in the church, pray for the sin. Don't talk about it. Don't add fire fuel to the season. Pray about that. Pray about that. Love that person. Let them know that God loves them, too. I pray, God, these words will help you. Wherever you are in your spiritual condition, you may come now together we sing the Savior's invitation.